So uh, we're heading into a season of time where holidays are approaching. And I know that in my life, the holidays have always been very difficult because of the death of my mother on Christmas and because of lots of volatile family dynamics and never feeling really safe at a holiday. And so I know a lot of people this time of year feel an extra amount of pressure because society, media, movies, if you're a Hallmark fan, you know, there's all these extra expectations that are put on us to have this certain kind of life, certain kind of family. And so for me, a lot of times what it did was it just made me feel sad, but I wasn't really conscious of that. I would sort of suppress that and I would try to like be okay. And I remember, you know, much of all my life I was in the church and much of my life I was a, a pastor or an elder. So we have all this, all these calendar events for the church, you know, during this season where there's a lot more pressure to do these things and we did bigger and better things. So there's actually a lot more work. And then there's all the financial pressure of putting on parties or buying presents or, you know, getting decorations. So it's like this part of the year, just things start to just really ramp up. And I don't think I used to didn't, I just didn't think, I just didn't think about it. I didn't think about all the extras that came. You're supposed to be enjoying the holidays. You're supposed to be thankful. You're supposed to be, you know, you know, celebrating the birth of Jesus. You're supposed to have happiness in your heart and be grateful that it's, you know, it's Thanksgiving. And for many of us living in difficult situations, we're already running at the red line. We don't have any room for extra expectations. I just want to say, honestly, as a by way of testimony, that I had to start to really be honest with myself about what the expectations were. And then I had to, do, to make a plan for myself about what I was willing to do and what I wasn't willing to do. And this gets really hard because everybody's like, oh, you're not going to come to the party or you're not going to do this or what about this or what about that? And, you know, <laughs> so, uh, you know, with the with those expectations and then the family expectations, then were also revealing to me how little I actually had how much I wished I had something else. I wish that since I was 10, Christmas wasn't a bummer. But when you're told your mom's dead at 10 and on Christmas morning, it's kind of such a trajectory, right? So what I realized is I had to do a bunch of my own internal work instead of trying to appease all of the expectations. Now, as a survivor, appeasing people is my thing. <laughs> It's what I'm best at. It's how I survive. But to be healthy in the long run, I can't do that. So this holiday season, what I would, I would encourage you to do is take some time and really like assess what the expectations of you are. And then instead of just being obligated to those things, what can you do this holiday season that's not out of obligation? What things can you avoid and not do out of obligation. And instead, do what you want. So I hear this all the time from people. Well, I always have to go to my relative's house. And like this one woman I um, was talking to her earlier this week, she's like, my uncle who molested me is always at these things. And I'm like, but it's never been dealt with? And she's like, no. I'm like, but you go every year and you're triggered out of your mind by this guy being there and he acts like nothing happened. She's like, yeah. I'm like, why are you going? And she's like, well, I have to. I'm like, no, you don't. So, I mean, that's an extreme example, but we do that on all kinds of levels. So what I'm wanting you to do is assess that for you and then make a plan. What can you do that's not out of obligation? Now, there might be some things that you feel like I just have to do that. Okay. But maybe there's one or two you don't. So those one or two you don't is going to open up space for you so that maybe you can, instead of having pressure during holiday season, you can have some enjoyment. And here's the other thing. If you're in a relationship with an ex who you're trying to co-parent with and they're crazy and you have to share holidays, I would highly encourage you to have strong boundaries and do not do things out of obligation. And the difficult part here is your kids are going to have to feel some discomfort. And that discomfort is healthy 
because it lets them know what the truth is instead of us acting like there's no problem and protecting them from that difficulty. So rule of thumb is what can I do that's not out of obligation? So if I can take it from I'm doing 70% obligation, I can take it to I'm doing 68% obligation. That's going to make a huge difference in your holiday season. So how does one decide if they're doing it out of obligation or not? How do you, you don't want to do it? You have to talk yourself into it. You feel anxious about it. You like, for example, if my best friend asked me over to his house, I'd be like, okay, great. <laughs> if somebody unhealthy asked me over, I'm like, oh gosh, I don't want to do that. So paying attention to that is what guides you. If you want to do it and you're op- and you're excited about it, then go. If you have hesitation, you have anxiety, you're uncomfortable, don't do it if possible. What always helps us with the guilt is living in the truth. Because the guilt is based on an accusation that's false. Well, then you're seeing that you're disappointing people, which adds to the guilt. Well, the disappointment does not have to add, disappointment of other people does not have to lead to guilt. I know that it does. But listen, no one ever died from disappointment. But you might die from compliance. So, and here's the thing. When we start to value ourselves, other people are going to be disappointed because we're not going to comply with them. And if somebody's disappointed because we won't comply with them, then that's a revelation of their unhealthy, the unhealthy nature of their relationship to us and how they see us. Yeah. Is that what you want? No. So when the feelings of guilt come up, you have to rehearse the truth. I'm not doing anything wrong. I've chosen not to go. That person's disappointed. Okay, fine. That's their deal. But I'm not obligated. I don't have any reason to feel guilty. I've done nothing wrong by saying no. Rehearse. Because your internals are going to take you down the road of it's your fault. You shouldn't do this. And what about that? And you're this and you're that. And all the, whoever the committee was in your head and whoever lied to you during your childhood and your upbringing and your marriage or whatever, that stuff gets triggered. And so we have to like, we become the chairman of the committee. We're like, wait, nope. This discussion is over. The accusations are out. I'm doing nothing wrong. The facts are this. Move along. And now we might have to do that 15,000 times in an hour, but that's what you do. Yeah, because it's like it feels good to not have to go to these events or do these things, but then it doesn't feel good because of the guilt, I feel like. Like it's a <clears> difficult <throat> well, reality to work through. And, and there's some level of guilt that you have to confront because you're breaking the rules of the sick system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you're feeling a little guilt, that's also a sign that you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You're actually breaking the rules. Like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. You don't, you don't spend a lifetime being compliant with the rule system and then break it and not feel anything. Mm -hmm. So it's also very normal to be like, Oh, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. But that uncomfortableness is what I call productive uncomfortableness as opposed to compliance, which is uncomfortable and produces nothing good. It just keeps you stuck in a system that's only going to harm you. The uncomfortableness of setting a boundary or having your own idea or not being obligated, that difficulty is going to lead you to health. So it's productive. Mm 